also uh, Revelation. And uh, there's Lucy and baby Luke. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay, the title of the message tonight is Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation. These are very important things, and they're different things, and so we're going to be discussing them. Uh, now, if we think about what wisdom is, uh, that's the ability to make sound judgments, uh, to to good decisions. It's the ability to make good decisions based on experience, knowledge, and the um, sound judgment. And, and so we all need to make decisions and it's best to make good decisions. And so wisdom is really important, but revelation uh, is divine inspiration. Mm. And so these two go hand in hand and we're going to be looking at uh, this concept that they go hand in hand. Now, there is a um, passage in Ephesians 1. It's a prayer that uh, the Apostle Paul prayed for the uh, church at Ephesus, and the Lord had me pray it over myself for a year. And mm -hmm. so uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you, I know works. Um, uh, it's about wisdom and revelation, uh, and I prayed it over myself for a year, and I've had to make a lot of decisions. There was a time I had, uh, mm -hmm. I was over 200 employees, and so I had to, I was constantly making decisions on hiring and firing and promoting people and making, giving raises and all of those things, so I had to make a lot of decisions, and I always sought the Lord, and he gave me uh, this spirit of wisdom and revelation. Uh, and so both of them go together and we can't use one without the other. Uh, I mean, we're not as effective if we try to use one without the other. Now, uh, wisdom is not something uh, static. Uh, it, it We need to be have a dynamic and bring forth uh, what God wants. Uh, and, and we're really not even talking about wisdom and revelation. We're talking about the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and revelation. So if we look back at uh, Isaiah 11, chapter two, it talks about the Holy Spirit and said the Holy Spirit's going to be on the root of Jesse, which is Jesus. So Jesus had uh, the Holy Spirit upon him. And he has uh, seven different facets. The, he's the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, mm. the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Mm. But that's the Holy Spirit. Those are just fa different facets of the Holy Spirit. And we can have uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we'd be covered and immersed in the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, we really have all of those. We can have all of those facets of the Holy Spirit, but in this particular prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians, uh, it talks about the spirit of revelation, uh, the spirit, I'm sorry, the spirit of wisdom, and mm -hmm. then you have the revelation. So it's not just a natural wisdom. It's not based on natural knowledge it's our intellect it, our intellect it, it is the spirit so it's the holy spirit and really the emphasis is on wisdom and that's what uh every believer can have this uh this aspect of the holy spirit the spirit of wisdom and revelation and we need both of them um and and if we just look at the word of god and i know you all know the word of God and you have the word of God and you've studied it over time, but it's not uh, just a written word. It's a living oh, word. It's a living word. It is a living word. So it's the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of uh, wisdom. Now that's uh, really important. We need to know that we just don't have a fixed knowledge base, but we have the living word and we have the Holy Spirit. And, and so this wisdom that we're talking about tonight it is not a static, a fixed wisdom. 
but it's a person. It's the spirit of wisdom that abides within us and abides upon you, uh, and, and that he helps you make decisions that are good decisions. And we're going to see here uh, that really uh, you have an advantage. That's what Jesus said mm -hmm. in John 16, 7. You have an advantage over the world. Hallelujah. And that advantage is the Holy Spirit. And in this case, the spirit of wisdom. That's an advantage. That gives you an advantage. Whoever you're dealing with or negotiating with or, or whatever it is that you're doing, you have an advantage over the people around you because of the spirit of wisdom. But then the revelation is a divine inspiration. And that's what we need to recognize that we need not only the spirit of wisdom, but we need him to reveal to us uh, his plan and what, what is going on. And, and, and I like to think about these two verses from Proverbs. One says, uh, don't speak to a fool in his folly. Uh, and the next verse says, speak to a fool in his folly. And so <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, you, you've got to hear from the Holy Spirit. Uh, he's the one with, with the wisdom and when to, when to mm. use one verse versus a different verse. And I like to talk about Second Chronicles. This is one of our favorite passages, and we've talked about it before, but I just uh, quickly highlight uh, there was an army coming against Judah, and so Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat, uh, called uh, people together, and they fasted and prayed, and there was a prophetic word, and the prophetic word was, you don't need to fight in this battle, okay? So that was the prophetic word. That's like this revealed word. And so you need the reveal where there it was. The prophet said, you don't need to fight in this battle. Okay, so then they came together and they had counsel and decided how are we going to interpret uh, that prophetic word and what do we need to do? So they could have just sat there, but no, they didn't just sit there. They, they developed a strategy, mm -hmm. but they had the revelation, the divine inspiration and then they came up with wisdom on how to implement it. And that's what we need. We need to have revelation. That's the divine inspiration. And then we need to have a strategy. And that's wisdom, the spirit of wisdom on how to implement it. What's the strategy? So it's one thing to hear from God, but it's another thing to develop a strategy to apply what you have heard. That's right. Glory to God. And so what they did, uh, they heard the word, the prophetic word that they didn't need to fight in the battle. And so when they uh, developed a strategy, what they did was they sent out that the praisers. Yes, amen. Uh, that, that was the wisdom. The, the strat I mean, the divine inspiration said, you don't need to fight in this battle. But the wisdom was that they were going to send out the praisers first. And I'll ask Sherry to sing the song about what, what they sang. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever, forever and evermore. Okay, so they had the divine revelation from the prophetic word, then they had the wisdom to know, to have a strategy. And then we go down to 2 Chronicles 20, 20, and it puts these two uh, issues together yeah, again. Yeah. It says, believe the Lord and you be, be established. established. Or I could say, believe his word, because his word and, his, and the Lord are the same. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so we can say, believe his word, and you will be established. But the next part of the verse says, believe his prophets. prophets and you will prosper. So there's this two aspects of it. You need to believe the word, and you need to believe the prophets. Or you, and, and what we're talking about tonight, you need to have wisdom and revelation. See, if you, if you just operate in one of those areas, uh, you, you, you won't have the divine inspiration if you're only working with wisdom. If you have divine inspiration, but you don't have wisdom, you won't know how to implement it. Mm, what did need, it? You need both. What did it mean 
that we don't have to fight in the battle. What do we need to do? So yes. you need both of those things, divine inspiration and wisdom to develop a strategy. Like I said, uh, I had prayed this over myself for a year and uh, I, I used it on hundreds and hundreds of decisions over hundreds of people's lives about hiring, firing, and promoting all kinds of decisions. And I, I use both of these things, the wisdom and the divine revelation. And I made some decisions that were contrary to what other people wanted, but, but they, proved out, they proved to be the right decisions mm -hmm. because I was always seeking the Lord and finding out what the Lord wanted. So I want to give uh, uh, three different examples. We'll just start here and we'll talk about Solomon because there are three people, the three examples we're going to look at, and they had these two aspects in the Old, Te Old Testament. They were, uh, they were both, uh, they had both understanding and discernment. Mm -hmm. Not just one. See, here's your understanding. That's like the wisdom, uh, the spirit of wisdom. But they also had the discernment, and that's like the divine revelation. So there's a lot of people in the Old Testament that had both of these aspects of wisdom and revelation. So let's look at Solomon first. This is 1 Kings 3, 9. Out of the New American Standard Bible. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. For who is capable of judging this great people of yours. Okay, so God appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked him what he wanted. You know what he wanted? An understanding heart. And God was, was mm -hmm. impressed with it, what he asked for. He said, you could have asked for a long life. You could have asked for riches. You could have asked for all of these things. But because you asked for understanding and discernment, both of them, not just one, but both mm -hmm. of them, I'm going to give you those, but I'm going to add some things to it. I'm going to give you riches. I'm going to give you long life. And so he was one of the most powerful rulers of all time, uh, the wealth, one of the wealthiest uh, men of all time. And, and what did he ask for? An understanding heart and discernment so he could judge the people. Amen. That, that was Amen. the first example. And I want you to see that he used both aspects an understanding and discernment. Okay, and so now okay. let's go down to uh, the people of Issachar. These were the leaders of the tribe of Issachar. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let Sherry read. First Chronicles 12, 32, also in the New American Standard. From the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do, their chiefs were 200 and all their kinsmen were at their command. Okay, so the people followed them because why? Because they understood the times and they knew what to do and when to do it. And that word understanding has two meanings to it, understanding and discernment. So it's like what Paul wrote in Ephesians 117, a mm -hmm. spirit of wisdom, wisdom and, and revelation. revelation. Uh, so we're we're going to be disadvantaged if we just focus on one of those and not have both of them, not ask the Lord for both of them. And see, the the name Issachar meant reward. Uh, this person, this tribe, that was known for their reward, for their abundance. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses prophesied of the tribe and said uh, that they were going to have great abundance and it was going to come from the sea mm -hmm. uh, because they traveled the seas and it's going to come through the sands and, and great abundance because they traded in many different nations. And in Israel, they were known as the bread basket of Israel because that's where they produced the grain for all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very... Uh, uh, a tribe of great wealth and abundance and they knew how to trade and they knew how to send out merchants uh, to different countries and send them out on, on the sea in ships and, and bring in great riches in, into Israel. And so this was all about abundance and their name uh, meant reward. Uh, Solomon 
meant wisdom. Oh, that's, that's what he was wise. Oh, wow. Not only was he wise, but his name meant wisdom. And here we get Issachar, uh, it's about abundance. And, and they had abundance because they had understanding and discernment. They knew what to do and when to do it. There's nobody else uh, that actually had that. Uh, no other tribe uh, operated like that. No other tribe was the merchant of uh, Israel, but this tribe of Issachar. And so you had mm -hmm. 200 leaders and they could operate in unity and they would know what to do and when to do it. And uh, all of their people followed them and they were a very powerful army. Okay, now here comes the third example. And mm -hmm. again, all three of these have understanding and discernment, just like Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, 17, that we can have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. revelation. So we're going to, let's look at Daniel. And this is talking about not only Daniel, but about some other youth uh, that were taken uh, as princes, prince. They were all, each one of them was a prince in Israel and they brought them in. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to bring them into his court and train them. And so that he, they would be wise and could give him counsel and we're going to see that Daniel and uh, his companions had both understanding and discernment. Mm, so mm, I want to mm. share to look at these two verses. Okay. The first one is Daniel uh, chapter one, verse four. It says, four youth in whom there was no impairment, who were good looking, suitable for instruction in every kind of expertise endowed with understanding and discerning knowledge. Mm. There it mm. is. This is what Nebuchadnezzar chose to bring into his court to be his counselors and advisors. They had understanding and discernment. And who had the ability to serve in the king's court. And he ordered Ashpence to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. Okay. Now let's go down to another verse. I believe this is Daniel uh, chapter one, verse 20. As for every matter of expertise and understanding about which the king consulted them, he found them 10 times better than all of the soothsayers or the priests or the conjurers who were in all of his realm. So he had all these counselors and he described them as 10 times better counselors. But don't you want that? Hallelujah. Don't you want that in your life to be 10 times better in making decisions than all the people around you? Hallelujah. 10 times better. Or you can make uh, investments and, and they'll be 10 times better than other people can right, make. Right, right. Because you have the spirit of wisdom, wisdom and, and revelation. revelation. Remember, revelation is that divine inspiration. It's really important to have both of these, but you can have it because God is no respecter of persons. Paul wrote this prayer out. It has uh, other verses, but uh, basically what those other verses say is that when you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, there are three things that you will have. And that first, you will know your calling. That's number one. Mm. So if you're wondering what your calling is, you need the spirit of, of wisdom and revelation so that you will know your calling. The second thing that you will know when you have these two things, you'll know your inheritance. Oh, wow. Glory to God. I believe that uh, the tribe of Issachar, they knew their uh, inheritance and they got it. That they, they were supposed to have rewards. They were supposed to be known for abundance and they received it. So the first one that we can have as a result of having the spirit of wisdom and revelation, we can have glory to God. Mm, we mm. can have, know our calling. We can have our inheritance and we can operate in the power of God that mm -hmm. raised Jesus from the dead. Oh, I so all that. three of those are promised you if you have these two things, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
So how do we get it? Well, it obviously comes through a prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paul gave, gave us the key. It's through prayer. And like I said, I prayed this prayer, not just this one verse, but I prayed several verses there. I prayed them over me uh, every day for one year. And then the, that was all the Lord asked me to do. And I received the spirit of wisdom and the spirit and revelation. So the spirit of wisdom, of course, is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But it's really the emphasizing wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not just intellectual, intellectual knowledge here. I, I'm talking about having the Holy Spirit in you in such a measure and operating on you and through you in such a measure as to bring forth Christ because we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Now, if you've got the mind of Christ, you'll make the right decisions. And if you have revelation, then that's divine inspiration. It's yeah, like and let me expand word. on that for just okay. a second. That Let me just expand that definition of divine inspiration. It means that you're hearing from God, that you hear his voice, and you're one of his sheep, and you hear his voice, and a strange voice you will not follow. That's in John chapter 10. And so when he talks about divine inspiration, it means that you're hearing from, you're hearing the voice of the Lord is, that's an expanded right. definition. Okay, so you're hearing the voice of the Lord. And, you know, Jesus explained it. He said, I'm going to send a, another comforter to you. And when he comes, he's going to take the things that belong to me. Mm, hallelujah. And he's going to show them to you. So mm, mm. you need the Holy Spirit operating in your life. And because he's mm. going to take the things that belong to Jesus and uh, show them unto you and show it to, to you. But not only that, Jesus said, everything the father has is mine. Mm. He's given it to me. Everything the father has has been given to me and everything I have, the Holy Spirit is going to show it to you. Hallelujah. So you need the spirit of wisdom operating in your life. And I'm going to ask uh, Sherry, and the two of us are going to agree in, in a few moments, uh, that we're going to pray over you to receive the spirit of, of wisdom, wisdom and, and revelation. revelation. Amen. And you Amen. need both of them, and, and you need to understand them. And, and if you don't understand these concepts, then you're not actually going to activate them. You're not going to receive them. You need to receive what uh, is being taught in this message today, because I believe it's very important. We all need it. Now, how, how can we apply it? Well, we can apply it with our family. Don't yes, you make a lot of decisions, decisions. Uh, related to your family? Uh, your finances. And, and your finances and your job and your career and your education. And, and uh, all of the, you need to make decisions in all of those. You need to make good decisions. Wouldn't you like to make decisions that are 10 times better? Oh, hallelujah. What hallelujah. anybody else can make? It's not by your ability. That's it's not, right. It's How not much by you your know? intellect. It, it's not what you've read in, mm -hmm. in some book. It, it's nothing like that. It's not static. It, it's not fixed. It, it's not limited. Oh, glory. There it is. There's the word. That's it's good. not limited. limited. It is not limited because it's infinite wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And he can know all things and he can show all things to you. You need this kind of wisdom I'm talking about. Oh, because raising a family, oh, you've got to make a lot of decisions. A lot of decisions. And you don't want to make the wrong decision. Uh, I, I've seen people, my, uh, parents make uh, decisions that were just terrible and had terrible consequences. You don't want to be like that. You don't want to make those kinds of decisions and that you would regret for the rest of your life. And you don't want to make decisions uh, in your marriage mm -hmm. uh, that you will regret for the rest of your life. Right. Always seek the Lord. Uh, and for these two aspects, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ooh, and so we yeah. need both of those in everything you do, in your finances. Uh, you don't want to uh, buy a house uh, that you eventually lose. You don't want to 
and go out and make an investment that you're going to lose money on. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do uh, make those uh, decisions that are wrong. You want to make good decisions 10 times better, better than, than anybody than the world. around. Yeah. Than 10 times better than the world can make. And that's what you can do because you're you are in a better position than Daniel was. Oh, hallelujah. See, hallelujah. you are in the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and mm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, Daniel would have the spirit come upon him, but praise the name of Jesus. You've got the spirit of God living on the inside of you. He's there 24 seven. And, and like brother Fred said, we have the advantage we have the advantage over the world. We have advantage over the enemy uh, because of the Holy Spirit. It's important to, in every decision you make, seek the Lord first. Seek him and, and realize that you have someone in you, a person. It, he's the Holy Spirit, but he's also the spirit of wisdom. He's emphasizing that in this whole uh, message tonight. It's the spirit of wisdom you need the spirit of wisdom. I, I don't care whether it's a simple decision uh, in your work uh, or it's a major decision about marriage or raising children. Or what to cook for tonight. Wh whatever it is, you need the <laughs> Holy Spirit there with you, yeah, leading you and guiding you and inspiring you. Amen, amen. It's going to make a difference in your life. A and we will pray for you, but you can continue yes. uh, to pray this prayer over you. Ephesians chapter one. Yeah, the real emphasis it. here is verse 17. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse. Okay. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. 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 We just need to pray that over ourselves. Like Brother Fred said, he did it for a year. And, uh, and you know, and I have spoken this, but I haven't spoken it for a year. And I, I do believe that Brother Fred operates <laughs> in both of these. And uh, we operate as a team uh, together very well with the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of, of uh, revelation, our divine inspiration right right and uh that that we hear from the lord sometimes we get in our car and we just drive we just drive and we pray in the spirit and we talk about the lord and we begin to uh bring forth that wisdom and also bring forth that divine uh inspiration or we hear from the spirit of god we hear from the lord and and that those work together uh so that so that we can bring forth uh, uh, the messages that God wants for his people. And uh, he loves his people and we love his people. And so that spirit of wisdom and revelation is they work together very well. Okay. I want to thank you for being here tonight. And uh, I, like Sherry said, we love you and we want the best for you. Amen. And to know that, just knowledge, just intellectual knowledge is going is not going to work. Right. Not like the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. So thank you for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry and ask her to pray for you. Yes, I am going to pray in, in just a few moments. But let me say this. As we seek the Lord, he has people that he wants us to, to talk with. He has uh other the holy spirit knows who you are and he knows what you need he knows what george needs he knows what joy needs and lucy and jen and mary and jenny and and sophia and and all of our other wonderful people he knows what you need and and so as we seek the lord uh then ask him uh that's part of of the wisdom and the, the the spirit of wisdom and revelation is not only we're not by ourselves we're not alone and and I know when we began to begin to walk in in the spirit we had lots of wonderful people 
that would come to us and they would explain things to us and they would give us uh, scriptures to read and and in and, and, and books to read uh, that we would receive from the Holy Spirit uh, everything that we needed. And, uh, and so I'm so much appreciative of those that helped us when when we were growing in the Lord. And uh, and I know that that you help others and and that's important uh, to just bring forth that spirit of wisdom and, and revelation. I'm going to pray uh, for each one of you and and so let's just uh, let's just put our hands up uh, together right now and Father, I thank you for your mighty power going forth, uh, your um, electricity, your energy uh, going forth into each person that is on this Zoom meeting uh, and, and those that will be watching later in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will impart unto them your spirit of wisdom and revelation, divine inspiration from you, uh, dear Lord. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name, that their decisions will be your decisions. Their minds will be your minds. And they will operate in the kingdom of God and by the spirit and the power of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive that myself. Hallelujah. I receive it myself. Hallelujah. 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 But we need that that spirit of wisdom oh. and and revelation. We need to hear from the Lord, and and so uh, I'm going to open it up uh, tonight. This was a short message, uh, but I believe it was a very powerful message, and one that we can take hold of, and that we can use it in our lives, and um, and also if you have uh, something that you want us to pray about tonight. As a group, uh, we will join together with you uh, in, in prayer. And so tonight's a little bit different than what it normally is. But what are you going to take with you, first of all? Just unmute yourself. No, that, that that verse Ephesians one seven is so is so um, rich. That yes, the what's you know teaching us like a, like um it's it's a revelation and wisdom. I think we need divine inspiration. We need to receive vision and hearing God's voice. And yes, also, yes, 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 yes. The spirit of wisdom that's the holy spirit to give us strategies and it's through prayers that we receive that yes. and when we have those we will know our callings and and what's our inheritance in heaven and the power of god I <laughs> mean, tear, tear those verses down like that it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent that's excellent and that is that all of that is so true so true you know, we need to, to know how to uh, respond to our family and, and the words to speak and, the, and what do they need uh, us to do for them. Uh, in, in, for instance, in your workplace, you know, you make decisions every single day. And are those decisions uh, from the Lord? And, and when you believe this, this verse, you know, in Ephesians 117, you know, that you have that wisdom and you have that, that divine inspiration from the Lord, then you know what to do. You know how to respond in every situation. And, and so I just, uh, I love the word and I love what it teaches us. So someone else